Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Yoshi's Wooly World. But last time, we had an enjoyable romp through a field of windmills. However, our jubilant demeanor was short-lived as things got very serious in Shy But Deadly, where we blew up a forest to blow up the people that were blowing up the forest. So we just kind of overcomplicated things and became a middleman. Eh, smart business venture. This time, we have found a beach at the end of the grasslands, and we're going into said beach. Claw Daddy Beach. Let's beach. Power up ground pound costs 500, um, 500 beads. I keep wanting to call them gems. Seems to be a common reoccurrence that people have, and I just realized there's little cotton clouds on the ground. I guess they haven't really been hung up yet, and the yarn that was going to hang them up is sitting right next to them. Got to make up little stories about these little set pieces and what their purpose is in this world. All right, welcome to the beach. No relaxing allowed. We Yoshis are way too uptight with our moving around and all that stuff. There's the titular Claw Daddies, but not the Badular Ground Pound. No, uh, Claw Daddies can be beaten by Ground Pounds normally. It has nothing to do with it. But, come on. Come on, there we go. Uh, right there. That Yarn Ball was able to skip across the water. Helpful thing to remember, and it does behave things a little bit differently. It behave things a little bit differently. All right, let's uh show what I was trying to so eloquently say. Yes, by banking it off of the water and just having it skip, you can get all sorts of collectibles that are normally out of reach. The gameplay changes up a lot whenever there's water involved, and it's something good to keep in mind. Not only that, but this water, the fact that it's represented by little streaks to show where the sun's hitting it, and then you got sequins floating on top of it, it's pretty. It looks more watery than real water, if that's even a thing. Well, you know, okay, I feel like in games lately, water has been getting a little bit too realistic, if that makes any sense. Uh, a good example of what I mean is Super Mario 3D World, where it doesn't even look like water, it just looks like mercury because it's overly detailed, and like, when has water ever looked that detailed ever? I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, down here we got Cheap Cheeps. They are but lowly platforms for our sneakers to rest upon as we go across the water. But the rest is short-lived because... Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna hit that. Normally you hit him with uh, an egg and then you stomp on his head, but because we can just ground pound him, then yeah, we have it quite a bit easier. Um, speaking of which, yeah, his claws are not out so he can't hurt us in that state. He's completely vulnerable. Give me that. And let's turn two eggs into six. Ooh, nice big ones, big ends. I like big ends. I feel kind of naked without the uh, big eggs because I'm just, I am so used to having them. It, it's, I, I'm realizing how spoiled I am by the abilities of power badges and I can see people thinking that power badges are cheap and because they're a thing that you have to buy before a stage that you shouldn't use them, but because beads don't serve any other purpose, I, I don't see it as, whoa, okay. Uh, yeah, the powered up ground pound does that. It's kind of like the yellow Yoshi earthquake that's kind of been in some other Mario games. It just, it doesn't stun all enemies on the field, it just destroys them all. It's very powerful, very, very helpful for just clearing out rooms full of enemies very quickly. Uh, gonna grab that, instead of the illusion wall. And this right here. You might see a door. What I see is a speedrun category killer. It might be an awfully cynical way of interpreting a door, but you'll see what I mean momentarily. Moto Yoshi, defy enemies and gravity with Yoshi's blinding speed. Oh, and uh, jump with A, of course. It leaves out the most important feature. Look at this. By pressing B, you can honk his nose. You ever have somebody with just a big ol' round nose and you wanna honk it so badly, but you don't wanna ask them if that's allowed because you're afraid of them taking it as an insult? Now just me? Okay, well, you can live out your fantasies now because Yoshi has a very round and by extension very honkable nose. I love it. You get to zip all around on the walls and just go ridiculously fast and it said that you get to defy gravity and you can all know motorbikes all being about defying them rules and stuff. It's really fun, great power up and just overall excellent. Awesome opportunity for getting beads. And that brings me into what I was talking about. The any percent category for Yoshi's Woolly World is hilarious. You play up to this point as fast as you possibly can. You do that segment and just 
kill yourself so that you have to, or not kill yourself though, but make the time run out at the very end so that you have to play it over and over and over again. Grind up until you have 550,000 uh, beads. And then because you're playing in mellow mode, you just buy skip the course every single level. It's hilarious. It, it's so stupid. And it takes the fun completely out of it. Yet, <laughs> it's actually kind of brilliant that that's what the fastest way to speed run this game is. You just, you only really have to play the game up to this level. And that's a reason why the only category for it's 100%. And as you can imagine with how many collectibles there are, there aren't really a whole lot of people that run it. I've seen people run it. It's very impressive when they get it going. It's just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for a lot of people to do when a lot of other platforming games aren't quite as demanding. There are people out there that think Yoshi games get significantly less fun the more you try to 100% them, and, you know, this one's not so bad, but I can definitely see their logic. Let's get that across, get another stamp. Um, you know what, nobody? You discovered this invisible object, you get to be the one who I beat it to death with. Thank you. Watermelons! I barely talked about it all. They are kind of like a machine gun of sorts. Gotta make all those extreme comparisons for everything Yoshi does because uh, it's just kind of in the spirit of things. And yeah, you can destroy these little sponge blocks. You don't want to get too trigger happy with it because again, you might be able to destroy too much and uh, screw yourself out of getting stuff. But we don't need to worry about those things as long as we're just a little bit careful because it's such a perfect day at the beach. Eating watermelons under the umbrella, shielding ourselves from the hot sun. Catching and eating some fish on the end of our line, which is also our tongue, so it's extra convenient. Gaining some weight, not caring how much weight we're gaining in the process of being lazy, because it just destroys anyone who would do us harm. They aren't going to get anywhere near us on a day like today. And with such a feel-good day, I want to talk to you about one of my favorite topics regarding this game's development. The story of the first Yarn Yoshi amiibo. To get everything looking just right, a lot of the development team took up knitting as a hobby to get a feel for how everything should look, how everything should fit together, and they did an excellent job, of course. But a certain member of the development team, Emi Watanabe, she took up knitting to the point where she made Yarn Yoshis, and they were the inspiration behind the Yarn Yoshi amiibo that we ended up getting alongside the release. You can see the full story in the Nintendo Direct presentation for E3, um, I believe in 2015? Um, I'll have that linked in the description if you want to check it out. It's a really sweet story and I think does add a bit of history to this game, it's good to know. Um, these Yarn Yoshis, if you're wondering about where they are now, they apparently reside in the possession of Bill Trinan, and he's tweeted a photo of them back when he first got them. Haven't seen hide nor hair of them since, but I'm willing to bet that he keeps them very safe and protects them with all he has, because if he doesn't, I'm sure many people, myself included, be very furious with the man. Uh, Alright, so we're going to instill some bandages on these guys. I like how they instantly get bandages over the holes we poke in them with the watermelon seeds. Makes it very easy to take them out. Can I? Oh, right. Uh, ground pounding. Momentarily lets Yoshi dive underwater, and that's how you get to this. And by getting to that is how you get to this little spool of yarn. Looks like we're good there. Give me that. Take you out. Thank you. Gonna go for that, getting on top of the arch, getting the last flower. And now the time has come for me to go down and... Shame. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's only going to get harder from here, too, because World 1 is almost over, and the stages aren't going to be quite so easy to perfect in one try. 20. 5 out of 5. Oh, I didn't have a Miiver stat. Okay, well, never mind. All right, never mind. Uh, I feel a lot better knowing that I'm not following a trend and that I'm actually getting worse where I failed to do two things that I'm getting a perfect. <laughs> Our reward is, ooh, Super Watermelon Yoshi, or <laughs> you knitted the Yoshi Melon back together. <laughs> the Yoshi Melon. <laughs> I give them points for not just calling it, you know, Watermelon Yoshi or whatever, but that's, that's really funny. <laughs> okay, uh, the Yoshi Melon, who is, I guess, a really strategic cutout from a watermelon because the Ryan is on his shoes and the rest of him is just the melon itself, which would be really hard to do. Look at the ground. It's like walking on a mattress over here. So, uh... Bert the Bashful's Castle. This is what I've been saving Circus Yoshi for. And if the screen looks a tiny bit different, uh... Well, uh, there's, uh, there's a little bit of a reason for that. Uh, I'm gonna go in with no badge, I think. Even though those big yarn balls are always tempting me, I think not. 
This was supposed to be Circus Yoshi's time to shine, his glorious debut, his, uh, his magnum opus, his greatest show on earth. And I forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry, the Yoshi melon had me so over the moon that I just rushed into the stage without giving it a second thought. And I'm like, ha ha ha, Yoshi melon, I can't wait to use him. And yeah, we're doing this here today. And I was so enthusiastic. Then I realized that I didn't use Circus Yoshi, um, uh, uh, partway, half of, mo, all of the stage. I was at the boss's door when I realized what I had done, and as much as I love the Yoshi Melon, as great as he is, his time will come, and uh, we can't take that away from him. New enemy, Burt's. I didn't think they could actually hurt me right away, so that's a little bit of new knowledge that I'm getting here. Gotta think about the positives of what I didn't get to see. General rule of castles is... Crap. I mean, they are brown. <laughs> I'm gonna restart the stage. There's no penalty to restarting, you might as well do it if you miss something right at the very beginning, and that's what I did. It's kind of funny, because the general rule of castles that I was about to explain screwed me right here and now because I wasn't following it. I'll, castles play around with a lot of the idea of going up into the ceiling and there being collectibles up there and sticking to the top path. Yes, a lot of platformers do this concept where sticking to the top path is generally preferred and rewards you for being an explorer and being able to stay on that top path like your Sonic the Hedgehog. Yet, the castles kind of go up to the nines with it. I noticed that in castles especially, you're going to want to do that. Uh, right here, new mechanic. We got keyholes. And we have locks that these keyholes are on. And we have doors that these locks are on. Goes many layers deep. There's a lot of depth to this feature. Okay, so, um, uh, at the risk of sounding patronizing uh, any further than I already have, you want to collect the keys to stick in the keyholes inside of the locks on the doors. Uh, in this little room that seemed like a secret, but actually seems pretty in the way. Now I'm being extra careful around these Burts. I like that name though, Burts. Thank you. And up top, a flower. That's numero tres. And over we go under these swinging pendulum yarn balls. Yoshi's shuffling his feet right there, trying to stay balanced. It's a nice little touch they didn't have to do, but <laughs> look at him doing the moonwalk right there. <laughs> That's really adorable. Shuffle, 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 yarn balls at them before because they look more 3D and solid than the rest of the enemies and usually that look is reserved for enemies that you can't easily beat. I guess they are good performers if they kept up that illusion for me. Uh, down here, knew there'd be something I'm catching on to your trope sooner or later and we get some more hearts. These guys have great synchronized timing just kind of bouncing off each other's heads high enough that we can get up here. Pull on that and now we got a tower of three going at once. And there's our key. Uh, yeah, barely got them all, and there's not even a, 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 a patch in there. There is one there. I'm just trying to slip here carefully. Um, why not? We got big yarn balls. Let's have some fun. I wish I actually got something for that. Wait, actually. I want to kill all the enemies in this room to see if anything of note happens. Yoshi Sinister World starts here. Wow, they do a good job of stopping you with their blubber in midair. No, I didn't mean to press up. But in ha! Nothing! No, 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 come back! No, no, no! 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 Get on the ball! <laughs> That's playing Yoshi in a nutshell. Barely lose enough altitude on that flutter jump to go down to that pit. You will flutter jump in vain for 
15 plus minutes just so that you don't die, when it would have been so much easier and quicker to take the death. <laughs> but if there's even a 0.1% chance that you could survive it, you will. Dying requires explanation, I suppose. Uh, would be kind of a good part of life to know about. We've already been over the unlimited lives, but collectibles are another story. They must be collected again. No suicide missions to get those collectibles. Not worth it. Good life advice, too. Not falling for you this time. Back where we were, yet to go over those new enemies. That's really creepy that his head kept flying on without his body because that's where the propeller is attached. Again with this dark imagery that's manipulated by the art style. Those are fly guys, and they use necklace clasps to hold themselves up, attaching the propeller to their bodies, and they even dangle off of it as if they, you know, physically existed. Again, thinking of the small details. Time to key ourselves in. They look like the keys from Super Mario World. And they sound like Sonic the Hedgehog. Now the crossover is truly complete. Not just a glorified Yoshi costume cameo. There's lots of birds hopping down on the hall. Like they're uh, fresh out of Bertha, who gave birth to them. <laughs> Having a little bit too much fun here. Uh, you, guarding an egg basket very poorly. How shameful for you that you can only do up and down movement. I'll leave you in that purgatory for the rest of your days. At least as long as you exist within the RAM before you get overwritten for something else. Most likely an inanimate object, possibly one of these yarn balls. Even sadder exists in the purgatory. Hit those really, really fast, getting some stamps and some free beads. We are climbing up in those numbers a lot. I'm not expecting to hit the cap on the number of beads, but sheesh, I gotta stop being so darn stingy about, nah, I don't think I'm going to buy a badge here, you know, it's a little tempting, but no, I might as well take the extra power if I can. Uh, good. Okay, got my fourth on there out of five. I really struggle to collect these beads for some reason. Give me that. Hearts. Uh, back up to full health. Nice. I sure recovered from that death nicely. Open those, we'll spawn that in. Get another trick shot off of those yarn balls. Up we go. And there's our final flower. If I'm not mistaken, oh, this is cool. I have to know the answer to this. What if I time it this perfectly? Because it's supposed to be a segment where you run in perfectly, but if this hits multiple targets... Ah, that was lame. I don't think it would have killed all of them, but it probably would have killed maybe one more than it did if my aim was a little bit more true. <laughs> would have been cool. As a general rule in castles, once again, always check this spot near the door. That one was visible, but oftentimes there will be secret health to top you off. We're looking pretty pretty. Full health, all patches, all spools, all flowers. Let's see if we can't find a way to mess this up. Yoshi's sure are persistent. I assume they'd have all run home by now. Fine, Bert! Hitch up your pants and go bust up that Yoshi! His name was already Bert, so his castle is aptly named, fear him! Bert the Bashful! Throw an egg, lick his pants. Not an allegory for anything, not an innuendo, that is actually what we are doing. He's a bit of a performer. We'll have to see who the superior performer out of the two is. Oh, come on. How dare you just face away from me so I can't lick you. We're getting a lot of really good out of context stuff in this fight, but it's all completely makes sense in context, I swear. And his pants are pretty low. One more hit and we're gonna be ra raising the age rating of this game. Oh my god, he's a girl? I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I like how he's like a, a like mostly inflated volleyball, but that looks really wrong. Uh, so this boss reminds me of a story of something really weird that happened to me when I was younger. Um. I swear that this is not going to be really... Well, this is going to be a little naughty, but I swear it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, on a message board, I saw a guy one time 
who was bragging about being suspended from school for beating up another kid who made fun of him for playing Animal Crossing. Yeah, I know, Animal Crossing. The most innocent, innocent, nice game there is. And he beat somebody up over making fun of him for not playing that, was bragging about it to other Animal Crossing players. He's telling this big ol' long story about everything he did to this kid as if it was something worth bragging about. And at the very end of the story, he has one of the most glorious typos I've ever seen. He said, and to top it all off, I gave him a good lick in the ball. <laughs> And there was no edit button because this was early 2000s and forums weren't really that far along yet, so... Everybody was making fun of him, he's like, no, no, kick, kick, I meant to say kick! And he was trying in vain to protect himself, but he was just bringing upon himself so badly because he thought this was something that was doing good in the world and was worth bragging about. Also, Bert the Yoshi is a great name. I thought that was absolutely hilarious in a case of somebody trying to sound way too cool when they really had no right to be. Everything's gotta sound like Sonic Spin Dashing! There's our second world, and it's a desert. Who could have seen that one coming? For collecting every flower in a given world, having the metal to do so tests one's metal even further, unlocking a special stage that is even more difficult. 1-S in this case. And next time on Yoshi's Woolly World, we'll see if we're up to that challenge. Things are gonna get really hard from here. See you guys then.